Now, I'll grant it to you, this question is intimidating. Many questions are designed to be intimidating. Uh, just when you look at them, you get sort of scared by like, oh, I don't even want to start on this, okay? However, if you can see through to the structure of the problem, then all the intimidating stuff just kind of washes away. So, you tens, I'm gonna put the burden on you. Help me look at this and think, what kind of factorization tools do you already have access to? You know, you actually can do this too, but you tends, I'm gonna force you to answer. What kind of factorization tools do you have access to which could make, let you, help you get a start on this? Not necessarily solve it, but at least do something to it. Any you tends to suggest? Yeah. Okay, difference of squares. So maybe just underneath this, you want to write down difference of squares. The difference of squares is, tell me what the expanded form looks like. Difference of squares, this comes from the name, right? So you're going to have squares such as this. And what does difference imply? You're subtracting. Now you know the difference between these two numbers, okay? So that's what you have expanded. What is the factorization? We tend to write the a minus b first, just because usually the a minus b ends up being a smaller number, so this is in ascending, but it doesn't matter. Multiplication is commutative, so I can put them in any order I like. This is a factorization that will be useful to me in a minute. However, I'm a little perplexed that that's the first place you go, because at least as I read it, I don't see any a squared minus b squared in the question. So where is it hiding? Anyone want to suggest? Someone else? Yeah. yeah. Take out 16 to the power of 16. So up in this numerator here, um, the first clue you've got is this is the only difference in the entire question. Okay, um, All of these things are sums, not differences. So this is a good place to go. Now, a to the 32 doesn't look like it's a square until you factorize and tease it out a little bit. Okay, So I'm going to write, sorry, this is a little bit messy. Actually, I'll take it back. I'm just going to go to the right. You, don't, you guys don't need these factors of these numbers anymore, do you? You've got it? Yes, it's gone. I'm going to pull out, as was suggested, a factor of whatever to the power of 16, okay? So a to the 32 is a to the power of 16 squared. Do you agree with that? a to the 16 times a to the 16, just thinking index laws, when you've got numbers with the same base, what do you do to their powers? When they multiply, they add, so this is 16 plus 16. 16 times 2 when you have power and power, okay? So there's that guy, and over here, I'll have the b to the 16. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? So what I've got now is I've rewritten the numerator in a more factorized form because it reveals more of the structure that's useful to me. Namely, that even though it doesn't look like it, it is actually a difference of squares, okay? I better finish out for writing the rest of this thing. It's 8, right? Okay, so now if you compare what we've just written to this, you can see that I can transpose this numerator into this form and then it's factorized and I can see some structure, right? What's it going to look like when it's factorized up the top? Suggestions? A to the 16. Good. There's this first part and now I can move on to the next bit, right? And immediately you can see, without even writing the rest of the question, oh, now there is a way that I can access this, right? I can start to work with common factors that appear in the whoops, denominator. There it is, we've already identified, even though it wasn't obvious from the get-go, okay? There are common factors here that can be manipulated, okay? So, I'm going to pause for a moment there, and now that we've sort of unlocked at least access to the question, oh, I can simplify this in some way, right? I'm going to see if you can sort of dig your way into the question, remembering that this is the one other clue that you've been given, and we're trying to find a value for this whole thing. Why don't you spend a couple of minutes and see how far you can get. If you have an answer, call me over, I'd love to have a look. Okay, so I know a lot of you haven't quite got there yet. That's fine. Um, I reckon at this point, 
uh, you either have it or you're close enough that you're like, oh, I can see where this is going to go. Or alternatively, you're hitting your head against a brick wall and not making any progress. So let me give you a hand. You can see, once you factorize this out, right? You get this uh, combination, you identify the common factor, so off it goes, we can cancel it, that's kind of nice. And you get left with this guy. Well, the same trick that you used before to identify that these are squares even though they don't necessarily look like it, helps you here as well, okay? How do you factorize a to the 16 minus b to the 16? Another step, what do you do? It's the, it's this again, but instead of a and b, it's gonna be a to the, Eight. So this thing here is the difference of squares all over again, which again ha sort of unlocks another sort of um, another level of cancelling that you can do. Once you get to the bottom, once you get to the bottom, after you've cancelled as far as you can go, what do you end up with? Yeah. Uh, a a uh, bracket a squared minus b squared. You end up with that, right? And then you've got this 12b hanging off on the end, don't you? Is that correct? Okay, now, come back to the original question. The original question says, evaluate, which in case you can't quite remember because you've been using this word for so long you maybe you haven't thought about what it means, evaluate means find the value of this thing, which is trying to clue into you, hey, you should be able to get rid of all of the algebra here and just get a value, a number at the end, okay? So let's have a look at this one last time. We can actually use the factorization in its normal form. So this is a minus b, a plus b. And at last, that piece of information you were told at the beginning, which was kind of just hanging around there, like what on earth is that guy doing? You can use him now, right? So in here I can substitute in, and this becomes six outside of a minus b. Do you agree? Like I've just used the substitution. Okay, now, <laughs> at last you actually get to use this guy. It is expanding and factorizing. So, now what? Uh, it becomes six times, six times a minus, oh wait, uh, six a minus six b plus 12 b, which leads to six a plus six b equals to six bracket a plus b. Okay, so this is our second last line. You can see I've had to expand because then I can refactorize, right? It allows me to collect like 10 and refactorize. And this, of course, is? 6 squared equals 36. 6 times 6. So there is our value as promised. Okay. So what are we learning here, right? When you look at something that is disastrous and terrible, if you can factorize, the reason why cancelling emerges is because you understand the structure of what is going on. So therefore, you can get rid of the extraneous stuff, the stuff that actually is all just fluff, and it turns out there's a lot of fluff because this is just a fancy way of writing 36. Okay? Right, so one last thing I'm going to show you. And uh, those of you who have the Noether student problems with you will see that a problem just like this is what you'll encounter, I think, in problems three and four, I believe. It's something of that nature. The last thing I want to show you is, so far, simplifying looks like taking something that looks huge and condensing it down into something that looks small. And to be fair, that's usually what it is. However, it's not always the case. Think back to this. Which of these is shorter to write? A squared minus B squared is objectively quicker to write. There's only two terms, right? It looks like you've taken a step backwards to write this. <coughs> Excuse me. However, A minus B, A plus B, is more useful in a lot of contexts because you see structure. So to illustrate that, I want you to have a look at this. Okay? This guy over here looks like it's about as simple as it can get. Right? You can't use difference of squares on it, right? So what are you going to do with this? I'm going to give you a couple minutes to play first. The play step is really important. Play, I've already rubbed it off. Play is what helps you look at numbers and realize, oh, there is a pattern to these factors and there's a reason why my number has a non number of factors and no one else's does. I need you to play with this for a moment. Have a whirl with it, see what you can do. We're trying to factorize, okay? It's simple, yes, but I don't see any structure. So if you can factorize, See what you can do with it, have a play, 
and see what emerges. Okay. I'll give you a few minutes.